Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to explain to you how you can make a form or a survey in Outgrow. So once you're on our homepage, so say you're on our Outgrow homepage here, uh, you can either pick a form or a survey template or you can just directly go to your dashboard after signing in and then starting and then start to make your own uh, form or survey. So if you go on templates and then you go and search by industry, you will be able to see a bunch of industries for which uh, there might be pre-existing forms or surveys and then you can actually just uh, go on preview and it will show you that former survey template and then you can just build click on build your own and that way you can just directly open it in your dashboard and edit it there uh, but once in your, you are in your dashboard, you can also, what you can do is uh, start from scratch or build a template. So once you're in your dashboard, you'll see all these eight content types. And then if you click on forms and surveys, you can start for, from scratch in any of these layouts available here. Uh, each of them, these layouts have a different purpose. Uh, some of them are single canvas, some of them are multiple canvases, some of them have more image and video choices. So you can check out the layouts, layouts by clicking on this preview eye icon here, and then you can just use a particular layout. And in that case, you'll be starting from scratch, as opposed to actually selecting a template in which you would actually have uh, a pre-made uh, form and survey template, which you can just work on immediately. So in this case, let's try to uh, work with uh, a particular uh, form template. Let's see, let's try a job satisfaction survey. Let's try this one. If I click on use template, it's just going to open it in my builder. So once in your, in your builder, you can see that you, if you want to edit anything, if you just click here, uh, it will open that window up on this right hand side here. So for instance, if I click on this question that I want to edit here, it opens up this window here where I can just type in anything here and it will change the corresponding question here. Uh, you can also, in addition to that, add uh, any kind of variable. So for instance, if someone, uh, if you had like, if, if at the beginning of the survey, you ask someone for their name and email, which you can do through uh, the lead generation option here. Currently, I've put it like after all questions. It says lead generation should come after the questions. I can also do it on the welcome screen before the results or with the results, depending on how you want to use it. So if it was actually before, if it was actually on the welcome screen, then in that case, it would the form collects the user's name. And then in question two or three, you can actually add a variable where they're like, oh, full name. So what happens in this case is, what uh, this question can be personalized. So it says it could be, oh, full name. That is to say, I can actually put this variable in the beginning here and be like, Jake. So it will actually automatically show the name that was entered earlier. It's like, Jake, what do you like best about working for Outgrow? So you can actually change the sentence so that it makes sense with this particular variable inserted. So you can not just do this uh, for name and email, you can do it for any of the fields and any of the questions you answer. So you can see how personalized this form can get based on how you can use the data that was previously answered in new questions itself. And you can also use UTM source, medium, campaigns, term, content. So as you can see all of this will allow you to make this form very specific uh, to whatever advertising or marketing campaign you're using it in so that's how you work around with questions and also as you can see there are one two three four five six seven eight nine ten kinds of questions that you can ask in a form text input is pretty simple uh, text area is uh, much more than a text input would just be one line. Text area would be an entire box where a user can actually type in an entire feedback. Uh, drop down uh, is something that you can use uh, when uh, instead of say multi-select, if there are like say 10 options in a multi-select uh, question, if there are like 10 options, then it's really hard and it takes up a lot of space. So in that case, you just use a drop down menu where each of the option would be shown in a menu that is a hideable menu which just hides when someone's done using it so that's the function of a drop down menu uh, anyway so then there is a multi-select which is self-explanatory and single select where you can only select one thing numerical slider as you can see uh, allows you to uh, provide this kind of nice gadget that the people can move around and it creates a good experience 
and then there's the opinion scale in which you can just rate from 1 to 10. This one's an opinion scale right here. And rating is kind of like opinion scale, but it's just like, you know, 5-star rating, 4-star rating. But you know, what you can also do is that you can... Uh, uh, you can change what whether it's a star or a phone or dollar signs or anything so you can use any of these icons to show what kind of uh, uh, rating you are using uh, so in this case it was stars here so let me just like replace it with something similar and so it's so stuff like that it's really up to you it's really up to your imagination you can also increase the number of stars so for instance it can be you know 10 or something but you know 5 is ideal in case you're using a star question so so that is what uh, this uh, function does, question does. Then you also have date the option for like a date time picker, uh, which would allow someone to book a particular appointment for a particular date or time. And uh, then someone from your company can call them back at this time. Or you can also use the date time picker if someone is booking, if say you run a photography studio and someone wants to book an appointment with you for a particular date and time. So you can use that for it. That file upload is in the case, say someone wants to actually upload a bill or or this is a form for someone's CV and you want them to upload any personal statement they can do this uh, through this forms and survey uh, sorry this file upload option where they have the option to actually upload all these kinds of documents uh, if it's like a feedback form you can ask them to upload the bill showing that they actually made a purchase from you so it's again up to your imagination how you want to use these options and so let me just put this back to the original what was here opinion scale okay so that's how the different kind of questions work and as you can see the form is actually divided into sections so you can actually have more sections or you can have less sections it's totally up to you at the end of the form you can have like you know the uh, lead generation form which as i said you can also have before the form usually we have it towards right before the result because if you're actually giving away some sort of a freebie or like you know some sort of a coupon for finishing this form then you can lock uh, the coupon behind a lead generation so you can always follow up with the person and also email email them the coupon in case they actually you know they lost their browser connection or something so that is how you can actually uh, position the lead generation form and in the thank you page as you can see you can have a coupon or you can have uh, you know a various share and social media options so that people share the form with other people and then you can also have subscribe to social feeds which allows you to uh, have people follow your company's social feeds etc so that you can turn on from so if you're in the results section if you click on this, it'll just take you to the results section so you don't feel confused. And here's subscribe to social feeds. If you turn it on, people will be able to follow, like your, like your Facebook page or follow you on Twitter or any other social network that's available. Uh, you can also have a little disclaimer text here in case you want to uh, add something specific for your company. I've only just added an image here, but in addition to that, you can see you can also add some kind of text here or a description here. So it re it's really up to you how much you want to personalize this. And so once you're done doing that, as you can see, if you want to add more questions, you can do it from the left hand side here. It says duplicate a question or delete a question. And right at the bottom, it says add a question, a section, a lead generation form or a custom page. Now, the custom page allows you to do uh, to customize the look at a much more uh, uh, added level uh, but that's something you can uh, get in touch with a CS team about it really depends on your needs and our customer service team can help you with that uh, once you've done all of that and you figure everything out uh, you might also want to change the logo here from the Adgrow logo to your own logo so if you just click on the logo on the right hand side it'll open up the corresponding screen where you can actually change the logo so you just click on upload and you just put your logo here and it will change that and logo orientation can also be changed it can be smaller or bigger and you also have the like, you know, you don't might not always want to start the form with or from the welcome screen. Say it's a form that you actually want to embed on your website. So you actually don't want to have welcome screen. You just want to start directly with the form. In that case, you have the option to actually hide the welcome screen here. And again, there's the option to change the picture that appears on the welcome screen. If you click on the picture, you'll be on the right menu on the right hand side where it'll show you how you can change the picture. So if you are here sorry it's actually in the display settings and uh, you can just click on replace image and then you can replace it with either one of our uh, images that are available here or you can just upload any image from the internet uh, once you've done all of that make sure you go live by clicking here go live and that's when your uh, experience will be ready if you click and go live uh, you will be able to see that uh, this is the link you can share but you can also customize this link and you also have the option to embed it on your website and uh, if you need more embed options you can just click here and you can see where everywhere you can actually embed it 
And in this case, it takes you to the configure section. It shows you on full page, in page, pop up chat, in a greet bar, floating rectangle, side note, uh, custom embed. So you have all these options for embedding, which are really helpful. Uh, in most cases, you just have to like copy the embed link we are giving you here and just paste it in your website code and it will embed automatically. So once you've done that, you might also want to... Uh, so once so this is the build tab and then there's a configure tab. So in the configure tab, you can see uh, you can change a lot of options here. For instance, you can change the name of the survey. Uh, you can change the URL to say anything you want. So currently it just says something automatic, but you can keep adding a hyphen. You can remove this stuff and add something new. Uh, then in addition to that, uh, you might want to uh, fix the SEO settings. So how the uh, form would show every time someone shares it on social media or it shows in Google. So you have to write the the heading and the subheading, the meta description, and then you can also add a particular image. So there's no featured image that would show up on Facebook currently, but you can just click on upload here. That will allow you to have a particular image that shows up, maybe your company's logo or something of that sort. So that you can do. Then in email notifications, you can, uh, what this allows you to do is that every time someone finishes a form, if you turn this on, it will send an email from your account to that person. You can add a particular subject. You can also add a variable. And again, so you can have a personalized email to each recipient with their like, you know, full name going out. So, hey, this is your, so you, like, you can be like, hey, hey, full name, thanks for answering our form. You can actually write that. And that would make them realize that, oh, okay, this is a personalized email and they, it's particularly addressed to them. And in this, you can, again, in the content, again, you can add all of these uh, variables. So that's possible as well. And once that's done, you'd make sure you turn it on and you can send yourself a test email to see whether it's working properly. And then in notifications to self, again, this is, this is again, if someone completes a form, you want to know that they've completed it so that someone from your sales team or someone from your market team can follow up with them. They can call them if required, So, but, but they need to know. And the only way they can know is if an email notification goes to them every time someone completes a form. So you can add the email of that concerned person from your team here. And then you can add variables here again, by which I mean, it's easier for that person to follow up if you have the answer to all the questions listed here. So you're like, oh, let's put the answer to Q1. Q2, so so your the person who's following up is able to, uh, you know, know from that email itself what the data has, what what kind of data has been entered. Uh, so this is really helpful. And if instead of actually sending an email notification, you can what you can also do is use our integration section to send all this data that your form collects to any of these marketing tools. Uh, especially for Slack, for instance, you can have a direct notification that goes to a Slack channel, a sales Slack channel, where all this data is passed. So someone can immediately in that group can immediately follow up with someone who's actually completed this form. So that's totally possible. So in addition to these native integration integrations. Uh, we also have ZAPI integrations, which would allow you to like connect with nearly all possible existing platforms online. So that's what you can do. And then finally, if you go to, I'm just going to give you a tour of the analyze section. And so if you go to the analyze section, you can see uh, total visitors, the number of people who started, the number of people who actually entered their uh, lead generation, aka their email and names. And then the conversion rate is basically the number of people who came and the number of one the people who actually entered their email at the end and then you can see engagements is every click etc that happened so top geographies you can actually see everywhere in the world that this form was accessed from you can see the devices that it was accessed from and once you know that you know perhaps it was accessed more on mobile then you can go back to your build tab and configure it particularly for mobile so that you know it's a better mobile experience if people are actually using it on mobile so you can see that and then in traffic sources you can see where all the traffic is coming from whether from calculators direct access conversions you know facebook gmail etc and the kind of browser people used to actually access this form and then in user details again this is uh helpful you can see the email people entered and their full name and uh, uh, and how they answered a particular question. You can also filter all of this data by any of the categories that are present within the form. So let's just say if I wanted to filter by full name, there are all these if and and statements based on which I can create a filter and then I can just save the filter. Uh, so if full name is entered, then I'm going to assign them to a particular list. If uh, the name is something particular, then I can assign them to a particular list, so so on and so forth. And then you can also filter data by date. So you can see 
or from if the response is in a particular week for more than the another week and you can again you know use for different uh, uh, purposes so it's really up to you and finally you can also export all this data into an excel format and then uh, just use it for other uh, marketing engines if required so that is in short how you can use you know the build configure analyze sections and you can also use the performance tab to see if you're actually missing out in of in any kind of like you know uh, basic things to make your experience look good. So this actually analyzes your experience to, and tells you tips about how you can actually improve this. So that's about it. Uh, thanks for watching this video and I hope you have a great time making forms and surveys on Outcrow's very powerful tool. And if you have any questions, feel free to email us at questions at outgrow.co.